There were rumors going around about some old abandoned silo that loomed over the woods. Now, the woods were located in the middle of a field of just dirt alongside some railroad tracks. Not like anyone really cares, it's an eerie sight, don't get me wrong, but it just sits there looming over the woods with rush trailing down its side. Anyways, some rumored it to be haunted by some old farmer who hung himself in the silo and takes his revenge on anyone who enters. I say the rumor's complete bullshit, especially since the ones trying to spread the rumor always tries to back up their story with, well, a story of some stupid kids trying to go into the silo just to get killed. <laughs> Others say that the silo is just a good hangout spot to smoke some weed or hang out with some friends. Hell, no police officer would be hanging out around there, and parent types wouldn't think to look. So, with both positive and negative comments aside, my geek band of friends and I decided to check it out. We also decided to enhance the creepiness by choosing to visit the silo on a gloomy and cloudy day. So, when day came, me and my friends Pete, Meg, and Wes met at the house, <laughs> since it was alongside the railway that we all lived close to. We walked along a railway, talking and laughing, having ourselves just a good old time. That's until we saw it. The silo, that is. Um, it was just sitting there, looming over the trees. Curious, we walked towards it, as our laughter along with our talking started to die down. However, the closer we got to it, the colder it felt, as if some sort of cold, dark aura was radiating from it, sending shivers down our spines. Hell, Wes even let out a small yelp. We paced around the circumference of the silo looking for an entrance of some sort. We ended up finding a ladder leading up the silo. The rungs of the ladder were handles to open hatches as well, and it was all along the structure. All of them were locked, except for one. Annoyingly enough, it was stuck, so we had to get our big friend Pete to climb up the hatch, and within a few minutes, we were inside, standing in the silo, um, on top of some hay that was left in there. In the center was a large, ominous hole, deep in the hay. It was dark, but we could clearly hear a steady flow of air coming from the bottom. Oddly enough, there's also a rope descending into the hole. Since I was actually the only one smart enough to actually be prepared for this trip, I took out my flashlight. Holding the flashlight in my mouth, I began to descend, and I dropped to the bottom. Scanning the small area, I noticed everything seemed to be fine. I looked at the scattered hay and dirt, and also another peculiar hatch. I beckoned to others to come down. As they descended, my... I caught something completely unnerving covering the rope. It had a red tint and slightly glistened as the light hit it. Now, I hid my panic naturally and showed the others the hatch I found, and then Pete opened it, revealing a dark hole. Now, the fucked up thing about this is that it reeked a death, a putrid, smelling death. The others had sensed it too, and of course, Wes had a whimper like a little bitch about it. Meg ended up gaining some courage and took my flashlight, heading first into the hole. We followed her and walked through the dark tunnel for about 10 to 15 minutes until Meg told us we had reached another hatch. Once the unnerving feeling had gotten the better of us, we decided to open it. Then a bright light had filled the tunnel, and that's when we heard it. A, a piercing shriek followed by the sounds of something running, panting hard, in a desperate attempt to avoid the creature that had made a horrific shriek, we ran. We fucking ran! Once we were out of the tunnel, we slammed the hatch shut and attempted to lock it. <sighs> the sound had stopped, and breathing a sigh of relief, all of us had observed our current surroundings. At once, we were back in the right mind. We were in a concrete block, which appeared to be an old septic tank, but with an opening through the top, and through that opening, we could see the force above. We began to climb out, and then it happened. Again, we heard the damn sound. <laughs> Wes was even out of the hole yet. Poor fucking Wes. See, the creature slammed right through the hatch, and a sharp claw reached right through him and punctured his back, pulling him back into the tunnel. We heard his terrified screams, and then suddenly, it stopped. <laughs> we heard sharp snapping of bones and tearing of flesh. The rest of us were frozen, shocked even. The sound of Wes being killed was vaulting. I wanted to puke right there. Meg ended up having less of a stomach than I did and vomited. After that, we tried to find our way out of the thicket. We searched for a way out for at least an hour, but then we concluded that the forest was enclosed and there was a large perimeter of barbed wire fencing. We panicked, having no idea what to do, and realizing that that thing could come out in the dark and night was coming fast. And in a desperate panic, Meg climbed through, climbed into a tree, hoping the thing wouldn't find her. 
Pete found a small hole in the ground and... That was a bad idea. Again, we heard the shriek and the thing climbed out of its quote-unquote home in a panic. And I quick and in the panic, I quickly climbed up the tree watching Pete sitting in the hole. I also, to my regret, had to get a better look at the creature we were facing. It was the most grotesque thing I've ever seen. Its face was mask-like, and its pale white appearance contrasted with its dark skin. The face seemed to only have two dark holes for eyes, and then I noticed that large smile that stretched across his face. After a few moments of observation, I had noticed that its mask was made from Wes's skinned body. I was scared shitless at this point, as the thing was crawling towards Pete. I sat in a tree as I watched Pete run in fear, but... It was no use as the thing caught up to him instantly, shoving both its hands through Pete's chest and tore him apart with ease. Oh god, it, its chest is opening up, revealing a bloody tendrils that wrapped around Pete's head, tearing it off from its mutilated corpse, slowly pulling him in, slowly pulling it into the empty cavity as it sealed shut. Its skin, the skin face of Wes had degenerated quickly and replaced by the mask of Pete with the same hollow eyes and screwed up smile. Then it spoke of a soft, raspy voice. I am the pocket. Watch as I come for you. There's no point in hiding. I can see all, and all can see me. <laughs> It proceeded to crawl back into his dwelling as it spoke. From the other tree, I heard Meg crying. I beckoned her to climb down as I climbed down myself, and I told her we were going to get the hell out of this place alive. Hesitantly, she climbed down, and I went up the barbed wire fence and gripped the sharp wire, spreading it wide enough for someone to climb through. My hands bled, but... I ignored the pain as Meg climbed through the opening. Again, the pocket shrieked, and in, my <laughs> and in my panic, I hastily crawled through the opening, cutting myself up bad. Bleeding, I ran Meg, ignoring the pain, running until we had reached civilization once again. Ten years had passed, and Meg and I were happily married. I say, were, for a reason. The same reason why I'm telling you this story today. Meg is dead. She died a horrible, so horrible death. The police were called to the scene after a couple going for after a couple going through the walk in the woods found her mutilated, headless corpse laying at the edge of the woods. When I say the word edge, that means that it's far from the barbed wire defense. This own this only can mean that the pocket is free from its prison. It's free, and it's coming straight for me. I know it is. This is horrible. Right now, I'm looking at our marriage pictures, trying to calm myself down the happy memories. But as it said, it's said, it's always watching. It's always been watching, and it always is. I'm always watching. Oh god, what is that?